Hello farmers and aspiring farmers, thank you for taking your time to tune in to Agricultural New Directions Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. This is where we discuss everything agriculture, looking at various, uh, from it from, a, uh, from various perspectives, be it crop, field cropping, uh, horticultural production. We also equip each other with business fundamentals in agriculture, given that the name of the program is Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030. So we look at production economics, business finance, time value of money to mention but a few in this very episode we are looking at the horticultural recovery and growth plan and as such we want to look at how farmers can contribute to our mantra as a government of becoming an upper middle class economy by year 2030 through utilizing agricultural enterprises we are going to be looking at cucumber production from a greenhouse perspective and even open field how it, it can be done sustainably to ensure that as farmers we are profitable and we are also doing it sustainably. To discuss this and more, I've taken the liberty of inviting Beauty Magia. She is the sales and marketing manager, Sitko Vegetables, right here in Zimbabwe. Beauty, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Adza, for inviting me. Hello, farmers. Yes, Beauty, as we get into our discussion, we are in a greenhouse with uh, a beautiful cucumber crop. Just a brief introduction, a snippet of what it takes to establish cucumbers within a greenhouse setting. Thank you, Adam. For me, I would say greenhouse production, it can start from the household, backyard gardening. You've got your 200 square meters that you're not using. You put your greenhouse and it can even stretch to commercial production where we have greenhouses of up to two, three or five hectares. So when it comes to English cucumbers, was and I, we are looking at farmers um, making sure that you find your market first. Because remember, this is a crop which is required by, ten, by a niche market. It's not a bulky crop. And also in terms of all the agronomic advisors, I would say with English cucumber, they are also ranging in the same advisory that we give farmers in terms of establishing. But the only difference is make sure that you get your market and make sure that you have got uh, the demand for the product at the end of the day. Okay. Beauty, I would like to believe that when establishing your cucumbers, you also look at variety selection and even the variety that is within the, uh, this greenhouse. It's very interesting to find that we have cucumbers that have already matured. At the same time, we have still some that are still budding. And also we have flowers that are still uh, developing on the same crop with matured cucumbers. Can you talk to us in terms of this variety, what it is like, its uh, advantages, the pros and cons of this variety? So Wadzanai, for me, the first thing that I'll talk about is to say the market that we have currently in Zimbabwe, they need a deep green cucumber, mm -hmm. definitely length matters. The longer, the better. Mm -hmm. And also you're looking at a, a, a cucumber that will give you more shelf life to say if you harvest it today you clean rep the housewife buys at least in my fridge you to spend about seven to ten days yes. so also you're looking at the disease pack you really need a cucumber with high resistance so this cucumber that you're looking at is called gillion we uh, launched it last year and for me was that this variety of been performing wonders and we've got our famous dreamliner that farmers are used to so you're saying for those farmers who are already using the dreamliner you can also have your hundred seeds of gillion so that you can compare the two but for me what that the rule of thumb is to say your cucumber should be able to give you 30 fruits oh. remember we are talking about money so the ability of gillion and dreamliner which is a strength that we have is once you've got your maturing fruits, still the following up uh, 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 clusters will be giving you again fruits which you can harvest every week and sending to the market. And they by a farmer, you're being held by what we call consistent. So you're not going to the farm to the uh, market this week, next week you are not there. So it means weekly you are able to deliver to the market. So for those farmers who are looking for the quality crop, definitely Gillion and Dreamliner will be your perfect cucumbers. 
Thank you so much, Beauty, for that. Looking at the fact that we are producing our uh, cucumbers under a controlled environment, which is a greenhouse setting, how do we control or curb risks of pests and diseases? As we are standing here, I can see that we have this. Can you maybe elaborate and explain further on what it is doing and what it is representing, maybe its purpose, and also general pests and diseases that can be a menace within a greenhouse setting affecting or attacking the cucumbers or the flowers for that matter yeah so our Zanai, when it comes to a controlled environment i would definitely say to farmers you'll find that uh cucumbers don't really need harsh spraying because it's a fragile crop even the leaves are fragile and mm -hmm. also your fruits are very fragile so usually for english cucumber we recommend farmers to say you just need to come in with your fungicides which are more of your copa your mango zeb or even your crater but what we always say is scouting is very important so what you are seeing there was the night what we call traps mm -hmm. so this pheromone traps here we are looking at your white fly it's one uh, uh, pest which is a menace but still you need to spray it when it reaches the threshold mm -hmm. you just don't want to come in and spray so usually we say to farmers this is one crop that will cast it, cut in terms of your costs especially when it comes to your chemicals and i always say scouting is important this is a crop which is different from other crops which we recommend farmers to say weekly spray this weekly spray that but with this crop you can see from this field if we look going to take the spraying program it's very minimum because the uh, variety itself they've got much resistance or tolerance to certain diseases now beauty days to maturity of this variety that we are standing in our greenhouse of can you talk to us in when you establish it up to harvesting because i know that there is a relationship when it comes to sending your crop or your produce to the market you need to understand when you're harvesting it so that you make arrangements prior to that process can you talk to us in terms of uh days to maturity how long does it take from establishing it to flowering and even up to harvesting okay uh what the, this crop that you're looking at it was uh, established on the 13th of october and remember we are planting in situ that means you are planting direct planting of the seed and once it's germinate you're looking at your 50 to 60 days with your first harvest so the difference will be other farmers were than i if you look at this crop we have got cucumbers which are really on the ground and what we encourage farmers others will remove the first three fruits so that you get a straight fruit without any blemishes yes. others will leave those three fruits and sell them as um uh, regrets oh, or you okay. know you just sell them as bulk or you donate so we are saying to farmers on your day 50 day uh, 55 you should be now going to the field and remember once you start going to the market definitely every every week you are now selling your cucumbers okay thank you so much beauty for such a detailed presentation on that note viewers have come to the end of the first segment where we are looking at cucumbers production under a greenhouse setting we're gonna go on a short commercial break we'll be right back with this and more in the second segment stay tuned <laughs> Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness, in support of Vision 2030. Now, earlier on, before into the break, we're looking at cucumbers production under greenhouse conditions. And as we are standing in this field, it is an open field of cucumbers that was established to ensure that there is a balance. We cater for all farmers here on this platform, those that can afford greenhouses, and also those that look into open field production. Now, viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer was the name so 0777 alternatively you can like our facebook page agribusiness with what make a follow up on this episode and more and leave your comments and suggestions they are most welcome to us on our youtube channel agribusiness with what we are also now available on x formerly known as twitter it's at agribusiness 110 where most of these discussions do take place now earlier on before into the break beauty was talking to us in terms of measures that you can come with to ensure that you are protected protecting your cucumber from pests and diseases. Beauty, welcome back. Thank you, Azanai. Now, I want us to look at uh, cucumber production within an open field setup. Just a brief introduction of what it entails to produce your uh, cucumbers under an open field setup. Okay, Azanai. So, what we are saying to farmers is, 
we have got two types of cucumbers. We have the English cucumber, which you can only establish in a greenhouse, mm -hmm. which will not do well under open field production. And we have got what we call the open field uh, cucumbers. And we've got Stonewall and Olympian varieties, which you can only establish in a field like this without any uh, shed net. Okay. Yes. Now, Beauty, looking at uh, maybe the carrying capacity or the plant population per hectare when it comes to open field setup, what are we looking at in terms of numbers? So in, in terms of numbers, what the Nai, for our um, uh, cucumbers, we are looking at between uh, 16,000 to 18,000 plants per hectare. And also remember, in the English cucumber, you need to prune and leave one stem, mm -hmm. the cucumbers that we had in the greenhouse. And this one, you don't have to prune anything. You're working with your vines. So the more the vines, the more the fruits that you get. And you're looking at farmers getting between 30 to 45 uh, pl fruits per plant. Okay. Yeah. I want us to look at the fertilizer application techniques or the types of fertilizers or those nutrients that are key, that are essential to cucumber production and development and growth. What are we looking at from basal fertilizer to top dressing? Those macronutrients or micro or trace elements that are crucial when it comes to producing your cucumbers. So what I, I would say with horticulture, we are looking at our fertilizers. And mainly we are looking at our compound C when you're establishing our crop. And also we are looking at our top dressing, which is a end so that you get your frame uh, of your plant. And also potassium nitrate is very important when it comes to uh, your, 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 your cucumbers, both the one in the greenhouse and also the open field. Mm -hmm. So for me, when it comes to the open field, what then I, when you're planting, you put uh, your basal fertilizer after your soil analysis. And also in your week, Two, three, four, you can put your AN, and soon after that, you're looking at your potassium nitrate. In terms of water application, cucumbers, we are even encouraged when it comes to consumption that they have a higher water content. You can use it for your juices, they have a lot of health benefits when you consume them. In terms of effective irrigation system or water application technique that is effective for cucumber production, both within a greenhouse setting or even an open field, what kind of irrigation would you recommend for our farmers in Zimbabwe? So for farmers who are doing uh, cucumber production, definitely what I would recommend the drip irrigation. Why? You don't want to disturb the leaves. Or to make sure that your, your, your leaves are damaged and then you are encouraging your pests and diseases to affect your crop. So we are saying to farmers with uh, cucumbers, definitely let's go for our uh, drip irrigation. Okay, yeah. as we round off this segment, Beauty, I want you to highlight to our Zimbabwean farmers, those that come with maybe cucumber production or general as a rule of thumb to our horticultural producers. Some year in, year out or season in, season out, they are repeating the same kind of vegetable. Because on our vegetable calendar, if you look at it, there are those vegetables that can be produced throughout the year. They are not limited to a certain season. Talk to them in terms of how they can incorporate certain techniques to ensure that they are not extracting heavily from the soil. They are not depleting the natural elements or the natural minerals with our, which are within our soils. Um, what the I, to me, when it comes to horticulture, we encourage farmers not to use those heavy chemicals. And your best way when it comes to the different crops is your rotation. Making sure that you are taking crops from different families when it comes to rotation. For example, cucumbers fall under the cucumbers family. And you are saying when it comes to your rotation, you can come in with your solanaceous, which is your tomato. You can come in with your brassicas, which is your cabbages. So we encourage farmers to make sure that they do their rotation. And what Zanai, as I said when I was in the greenhouse, to say, the deep green color, color is one thing that the market wants. And farmers, as we are choosing our variety, let's make sure that we get the correct uh, fresh produce that the customers need. In terms of that fresh produce beauty, as we are standing in this field, you are holding that cucumber that is very healthy looking and attractive. But at the same time, there are scenarios where we are seeing that in as much as the cucumber is in direct contact with the soil, maybe there are some instances of discoloration or some uh, few instances of rotting. How can a farmer who's doing open field cucumber control that to ensure that when he's sending his cucumber to the market, it is in a good state that makes him fetch a good market price? 
was an eye, it also starts with the right seed. So when we are also doing our project development, these are attributes that we are looking at to say, once the cucumber touches the field, how much does it turn its color? You can look at this cucumber. It's almost totally green yes, throughout. throughout. So it means choice of variety is important when it comes to English cucumbers. Then in terms of rotting, sometimes we find maybe farmers will be over irrigating mm -hmm. their crops or maybe uh, they've been affected maybe by a fruit fly or something. But usually if you do the correct recommendation, your cucumbers should be getting a healthy cucumber at the end of the day. Thank you so much Beauty on emphasizing on diligence to our Zimbabwean farmers when it comes to selecting their varieties. Farming is a business and as you start you need to start with the right footing. Thank you so much for that. On that note viewers we've come to the end of this second segment. We're gonna go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the third and final segment. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness in support of Vision 2030, where we are looking at cucumbers production from both a greenhouse perspective and even open field setup. Now, if you was earlier on for into the break, Beauty here was emphasizing on the importance of variety selection, which leads to what the market expects and what the market demands. Now, this final segment, we normally reserve it for market issues and even issues surrounding storage, shelf life, to mention but a few to ensure that as a farmer, once you get it right in your agronomic practices, up to the bank, you will be smiling and making a living off of cucumber production. Beauty, we are here in the final segment. Welcome back. Thank you, Wazanai. When we go to the market with cucumbers, I once encountered a scenario whereby a farmer sent his uh, cucumbers to a certain supermarket. Uh, he was told that they were not taking the cucumbers. They rejected the whole uh, 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 consignment, citing that Raraka Benda. Cucumber Eroro. In some instances, it was bulging. The bottom part of the cucumber was slightly bigger than the top part. How can farmers avoid such scenarios? cucumber in certain portions. Okay. Well, then I, for me, it's an attribute again that these varieties carry. To say you need a straight cucumber without uh, the issues you are talking about, Yakuti Rabenda. And as I said, when we were in the uh, greenhouse to say, usually your first fruits um, are bend up because they are closer to the ground. So Ooh, when it hits the grounding. ground, then they curve following uh, 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 your, your, your ground structure. Mm -hmm. So we are encouraging farmers to say, usually I say, your first three fruits, consider them as rigid. Mm -hmm. That's why you find some farmers who just remove them as small fruits and throw away because of that issue. And the issue of bulging was that I would depend. Sometimes it's because of the water application. Mm -hmm. In the morning, instead of uh, putting, be it uh, you're looking at maybe irrigating for 20 minutes, because your irrigator was not there, they go for 40 minutes. Then, then tomorrow you come for 10 minutes. So that unevenness again brings in the bulging on your crop. Uh, how can farmers work to curb post-harvest losses and even issues surrounding the shelf life of our cucumbers? Once you harvest, how can you ensure that your cucumber has a longer shelf life? How can you maintain or curb risks of post-harvest losses? So for me, shelf life was then I comes back to the fertilizer. So with our potassium nitrate, you are making sure that you get the best fruits out of your, your, your field. And also in terms of losses, I would prefer farmers who harvest either towards end of day or early morning because remember this is 90% water. Imagine the heat that we are having right now and you want to be harvesting your cucumber. Definitely you will be sending the wrong quality to the market. Mm -hmm. As we round off beauty, your parting words, your word of advice to Zimbabwean farmers, can farmers make a living off of cucumber production? Is it lucrative? Is it sustainable to make, to make sure that they are maintaining their livelihood, sending their children to school through cucumber production? Your word of advice, your recommendations as we close. Well, tonight, to me, I would say this is one crop that a farmer can depend on. But I usually say once you have got the correct investment. Go for your English cucumber in the greenhouse. And for those farmers in the um, irrigation schemes, communal farm setup, 
definitely this is one crop because Wazana, if you are to go to Mbari, someone can bring 15, 20 those Saseka bags, the 90 kg bags, yes. and we'll be selling at any given time. So it's one crop that I would say for all your salads, remember Wazana, <laughs> you've got your English cucumbers. And for me, marketing is important and farmers let's take the low hanging fruit imagine 50 days you're already going to the market is something that farmers should consider thank you so much beauty for taking your time to enlighten our audience who's watching on how to produce your cucumbers productively efficiently and effectively so that you make a living off of these uh, types of enterprises thank you so much thank you Atena. it was a pleasure from me, your host of the name Manure. I'm also on Instagram. It's a W Manure. And the crew behind the scenes. Have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.